Hey, what's up? Jason here from Community3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick, simple way to build a swipe detection system that you can use for a mobile phone. So here you see as I swipe, the lines appear, and we get a little log entry there showing the direction that I've swiped, and it's going kind of matching the position. It's a little hard to see on the phone here, but you can see it on the screen. So how does this all work? Well, I've got three components in this scene. I've got a swipe detector, I've got a logger, and a drawer. And we'll start with the... Um, well, let's, yeah, let's go into the swipe detector first. So this is uh, based off some code that I found online. It was pretty good. It handled most of it and uh, just needed a little bit of cleaning. So I went through and adjusted it a bit. So what we've got here, let's start at the beginning. We have two vector twos for the down position and the up position. It's essentially where you're going to put your finger down and then where you release your finger when it's up. Now, if we're detecting swipes along the whole time, that up position is going to be variable. It's going to change no matter you know, whether we lift our finger up or not. But that's an option right here in this pool, which actually should be private. Let's make that private. It should be a private with a serialized field attribute. There we go. We want it to show in the inspector, but we don't want other things changing this. Okay, then we have a minimum distance for a swipe, just set to 20 right now. It's essentially 20 pixels. And then we have an event, an on swipe event that passes in a swipe data. And I want to take a quick look at that. This is just a struct that has a start position, an end position, and a direction. So essentially this data, this data, and then the calculated position. And what's going to happen is after we swipe, we'll fire off an event and things like that logger or the drawer can listen for those events and then act upon them. So let's take a look at the update method. The update loops through all of the touches. So this is only going to work on mobile. Right now I'm using the Unity remote so that I can debug and see it in the editor from my phone. You have to be plugged in in developer mode and you have to enable Unity Remote in the editor and let's just show where that's at real quick. So it's under edit and project settings and editor. So you just need to select, uh, I selected any Android device and worked fine. Also make sure that you're in uh, Android mode or iOS mode, whatever it is that you're building to, you're not set to a Windows build. Okay, let's jump back to the code now. So we loop through all of the touches, and then we look at the touch phase. There are a couple different touch phases available. If we hit F12 here, you see that there's began, moved, stationary, ended, and canceled. We care about began, moved, and ended. So in began, if it, this is essentially we first touched it, we set the finger up and down position to that touch position. So we're just kind of resetting it to the starting position. Now here we do a check to see if we only want to detect a swipe on release. So if that's not true, if we want to detect swipes the whole way along, then we do a check to see if the touch phase is moved. If it is moved, we set the finger down position to the current one and then call our detect swipe method. And I'll take a look at that in just a moment. But then alternatively, if we're not using detect swipe only after release, or if we are using that, sorry, then we're gonna go into here. This is a little confusing. I think this should probably be refactored a bit. So anyway, if you are using the only swipe after release and you get down to here, or even if you're not and you get down to here because we've ended, so essentially we lift the finger up, then we set the end or the down position again to the touch position and then detect the swipe. So let's take a quick look at detect swipe and see what it's doing. Uh, the first thing that we do is check to make sure that we moved far enough. We want to make sure that you know we have that 20 pixel setting in there. We want to make sure that we've passed it. So here I just check to see that vertical move distance or horizontal move distance is greater than that minimum distance. Remember that's that 20 right there. And then these just do a simple check, just do a math.absolute on the subtraction of those two to find the distance there, or the horizontal and the vertical distance. So if that's met, if we've swiped far enough, then we just check to see if it was a vertical swipe. So check that, we just see if the vertical move distance is greater than horizontal. If it is, then we count it vertical, otherwise it's horizontal. And then we're doing this right here to calculate the direction. So we're checking to see if the down position dot y minus the up position dot y is greater than zero. If it is, then um, we've moved up. So essentially the y position was low here, and I, I started down here, I went up here, so that's, uh, negative, oh no, that's positive, yeah. And then we're gonna end up with up, yeah. And then we do the same thing uh, right here in the else statement. So if it's not vertical, it's horizontal, we do the x direction to get right and left. There we go, let's scroll that over so it's all visible. And then we send the swipe. 
So let's go to send swipe. Send swipe just creates this swipe data struct right here and then calls the on swipe event. And again, this is just um, getting listened to on some other components. So let's take a look at those other components real quick. The logger, nice and simple. In awake, we call swipe detector dot on swipe. It's worth noting, this is a static method, so we don't need to get a reference to our swipe detector. This is one of those objects where making it static just seems to make sense because this is something that's gonna be reused across the whole project. You don't need to be finding references to it. There should only ever be one, and uh, this should just work. So we register for the on swipe, and then we get the callback right here and just log out the direction. That's what our logging was doing. And then the swipe drawer, not much more complicated. We have a line renderer component. Let's go take a look at that. Right here, you'll see that we've got a line renderer on it and the swipe drawer. And I just set the width to 0.1. Haven't set a material. If you wanted to draw this with a cool material, you could just swap that out. So we get the line renderer, then we register for on swipe. And then in the callback, we get the, the positions converted from screen point to world point. So that's so that we have a actual positions that we can give to our line renderer. If we gave it the the screen point positions, it's going to be like, you know, 400 and 600 and those are way way off. They're not where we want to be. Our camera is looking essentially at 00, zero. So we want to be somewhere around there. So we do the screen point to world point, pass in a new vector 3 with the x and y position from the screen, and then we give it a z offset value, which I just have hard coded at 10. So it's going to go 10 meters away from the camera at that position. Now if you want to pull it in closer, you just you know, turn that number down. Then we need to set the position count for line renderer to two. We could just do that up here, but may as well just do it right in here in case we ever change it. And then we set the positions on the line renderer and we're done. So this thing is listening in, our swipe logger is listening in, and any other script that you might have, you know, maybe it's a menu selection script or a menu swiping script or you know, some other action that happens when you swipe right and hit a specific thing or you swipe in a specific area of the screen. You should be able to hook all of that up pretty easily with this system. Now, if this is helpful, um, you can download the full project source below. I'll put a link to it. And uh, if you have questions about this, feel free to ask in the comments. Also, if you've done a lot of mobile stuff, swipe detection stuff, and you see any issues or have some recommendations, please share. I don't personally do a ton of mobile work, so you know, I could definitely be missing something. So please fill me in if, if I am. All right. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends and all that fun stuff and have a great day.